the last time that um, you interviewed me, it was at the Art of Calm show, and I had some pieces there, and they were a reflection of, of where I was at then. And since then, I've sort of taken a little bit of a different direction with my sculpture, and I've uh, become a little bit more focused on working from life, and that's really important to me now. Um, I've been doing a lot of portraits lately, and I find that that's really inspirational for me with the, the different individual characteristics of people and how we can relate to everyone's different face and their different personalities and everyone's so unique and different. And I'm also really interested in working with the human figure. I'd like to spend more time focusing on that in the future. And I think the human figure is really beautiful because you can use it to express any variant of emotion that we experience in life because you know we live our life in this body and, and, we, and we feel and express everything through the body. So I think it's, it's a timeless sort of way to yeah, express anything that you're looking to express. Hi, I'm Nancy Murphy and I'm showing um, this evening with the Images, a group of us um, artists that have come together uh, to collaborate and show our work. I actually was trained in photography with Tony Bounsell at Victoria College of Art and um, Paul Perigal in drawing and painting at Victoria College and David Hunwick was my sculpting instructor and they invited me a year ago to show with them as a guest artist and they asked me this year to be a member of, of the group. So I'm showing a collection here of some of the work that I've done in watercolor um, and also ink. I like to draw with um, a cedar stick. I, uh, I often find them on the beach and I will pick up a stick and dip it in to other ink or black watercolor and I just like line. I love the fluidity of line. I like movement with line. I like putting water against the watercolor paper and just let it flow and that's where I think you can see the lines in the horse series and also with the birds. I do a lot of printmaking. I uh, joined Ground Zero Printmaking in Chinatown recently and I worked on a print for the Victoria 150 um, celebration. This is a new print that I've done this week. It's actually called a collagraph where I used um, just some paper and I drew the woman with um, glue and actually just drew her and so when it when it dries, it's actually um, has a really beautiful texture. So when you run it through the press, you get some really lovely line and um, ink that, that pools. I like exploring different types of printmaking styles. I've done uh, woodcut, um, lino cut, and presently working on dry point etching. I do a lot of work around the ballet because uh, the Canadian Pacific Ballet has asked that I come and draw them. So I really enjoy doing that. So, um, yes, I just keep exploring. This year, as part of the show, I'm including some uh, recent uh, collage work that I've been doing, and uh, which is quite a bit different than the regular di kind of digital work that I'm known for. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always an interesting process doing this work, and I've had a lot of students, you know, as I, as I, because oftentimes I'm working on pieces as part of a demonstration in class, and they change and they shift. Um, I let, a lot of the time, I let the collage just kind of lead me and take me to places that I don't know where they're going to end. I st sort of start off with, with a background, I start off with one part of an image, but they can change and often do change drastically over a period of time. And um, in the end, I, I, there's, there's, there's usually some sort of uh, sense of completion and, I, I, and then I'll make some final, you know, final finishing touches on it. But uh, most of the time, it's, it's an ongoing process and uh, a process of discovery. And, uh, and, and that, there's a similarity between that and the, the digital process that I go through. Same sort of thing, but this is hands-on, working with acrylics, working with paper, um, working with, I sometimes include tissue paper, dress patterns, or any number of old things, uh, old uh, pages from a dictionary. Uh, uh, they're a lot of fun and they tend to be uh, more kind of allegorical than, than, the, uh, than the digital pieces and so I, I tend to make them more representational. They've got people in them and I've you know, started naming the characters that start presenting themselves. You know, this one is the, the Prince of Abundance and I've got uh, you know, the Spectre of Summer's Past and that. So there seem to be this kind of ongoing uh, kind of hierarchy of different people who, uh, who, who, who come to me through 
oftentimes through the work of other people. Uh, you know, I've got some using and appropriating images by Goya and by, uh, I can't remember some of the other artists I've used, but, you know, I, I, I try to sort of, I usually pull them apart and, and, and make, you know, different you know, positives and negatives and sometimes uh, we'll stretch an image on the bed of, the, uh, of a photocopier and, and manipulate it there and, and, and laminate it up images. So uh, it's a very interesting process and, um, and I thought I'd show them for the first time. Hello, I'm Carol Thompson. I'm part of the Images show here. And these are some of my more recent works that I've been working on. Um, they're called Omniverses and they're comprised of all sorts of different elements that I'm interested in working with. Sacred geometry, uh, crystals and stones, aboriginal imagery, underwater imagery, cosmic imagery, all combined together in this multi-dimensional kind of feeling and a sense that it's all happening now. I'm trying to create this layered uh, dimensional work that creates a uh, deep space. So they're like matrixes of creative energy. Um, so I'm also using a lot of color and all sorts of different techniques with pens and glazing and interference paints and symbolic languages and I do divinations to get um, forms and symbols. And the work I did before this also uh, was involved with that, was informed by sacred geometry and signs and symbols. And these paintings are from a series I did called Dimensional Dream. And that was from a visual diary from a trip and a residence in Australia for nine months. So I had many experiences there that I've translated into these paintings. Again, I'm interested in the sacred geometry forms that you can see there and the symbolic languages. And this one here has is called Opal Dreams and it's got opals in the sky, plus the Pleiades constellation. And this symbol in the center is the square is a, a Metatron's cube, and that's a symbol of Earth, so it's kind of like these, these um, cosmic opals have moved off Earth into the cosmos. This painting also is informed by my sac interest in sacred geometry and all of these shapes inside the big cube here represent different forms of sacred geometry and there's earth, air, fire and water. And also this central one is, is sort of a combination of those forms. And again, I'm putting uh, my interests of s symbology and um, symbolic languages in this painting. And it's kind of a cosmic astrological one because this, this whole shape here, the square and the triangles, actually are the same, it's the same shape as my birth chart. So it's just sort of interesting and I'm so interested in geometry that my birth chart has this, this shapes on it. So this is called the 13th activation and when I was in Australia I went to many ceremonies and and this particular ceremony some people were using these geometric shapes and we were looking at them and holding them doing things with them to reconnect bio circuitry in your body if you had <coughs> any kind of physical or emotional traumas it would sort of help to heal that so I was very fascinated by that because these symbols do affect us on you know, a cellular level in our brains and all sorts of things. So I incorporated this, this, uh, these images and symbols in this painting and called it the 13th activation in, as a visual memory of that experience that I had this there. This one is still part of the Australian series, the um, Dimensional Dream series. I had quite a lot of ones in this um, color relationship field with the, the Earth's color of Australia coming out a lot. And this actually is a mountain with a, a rainbow serpent twirling around it. And I went up to this mountain and had some various experiences there. And 
and also it's about, uh, it's called birthday evolution, and I had my birthday in Australia at that time, and there's kind of these, these um, boomerang butterflies there, because it was, my whole experience in Australia was extremely transformative for me because of these ceremonies and meeting various people, and so this again is part of this narrative diary that I produced after that trip using interference paint and high-key color and, and geometry again in the center.